So we stopped at number five. Visham, Visham Gopa Asya Charanti Jantava Dvipachayat Uta Chatushpad Aktubhih Chitraf Praketah Ushaso Mahan Asi Agnesakhye Marishama Vayam Tava. This was the last verse. This is the guardian of the world and its peoples, Bisham Gopa, the shepherd of all these herds. All that is born moves by his rays and is compelled by his flame. Both the two-footed and the four-footed creatures. This is the rich and great thought awakening of the dawn within. With him for friend, we cannot come to harm. So Shirobindo puts uh, him, Agni, as a rich and great thought awakening of the dawn within. So if we can imagine awakening of the dawn within, that would be the flame. It is him who calls to the dawn to come. And it is the dawn's awakening within which is calling the dawn to come from above. Um, it fits to that idea of that the yoga is done by the divine within us. That the flame itself, our aspiration, is the action of the divine. Okay, we are moving to a new verse. To vam advariyoh upahota si purviyah prashasta pota janusha purohitah vishva vidvan artvijya dhira pushya si agnesakhye marishama bayantava. Um, this is the priest who guides the march of the sacrifice the first and the ancient who calls to the gods and gives the offerings. His is the command and his the purification. From his birth he stands in front the vichar of our sacrifice. He knows all the works of this divine priesthood. Artvijya. Yeah? For he is the thinker who increases in us. Dhira Pushyasi. With him for friend we cannot come to harm. I will go word by word. Tvam Advaryu, you are the Advaryu. Uta Hotasi, and you are the Hotar. These are the priests of different um, uh, functions, different uh, faculties. One is Hota, who is summoner of the gods. He is the priest of Rig Veda, actually. And Advaryu is of Yajur Veda. He is the one who, um, who pronounces the sacrificial formula, Yajus, Yajunshi, Advaryu. So he is in charge of Connecting heaven and earth, Adhavaryu, yes, whereas Hotar is the one who invokes, who starts the movement of summoner of the gods. He invokes the gods as a as aspiration from below, so to say. And this Prashasta is another, and Porta is another names of different you know, priests. Um, Many do not even translate these priests. They leave them as they are, Prashastar, Potar. Uh, Shirobindo translates them. Uh, the first and ancient who calls to the gods, that is Hota, and gives the offering. Adhavaryu. The priest who guides the march of the sacrifice, this Adhavaryu, and gives the offering Hota. Interestingly, that Hota, although he invokes, um, it's from root... Um, Juhoti, yes, uh, from root 
Hve, Wu and Hve, their kindred roots, to call and to make oblation. So to call, to invoke and to offer, to give something into the, put something into the fire, both. So when we offer, we spoke about this most probably already, when we offer something, we call. We can't offer without calling. So when we call the devata, we, we have something to offer. Otherwise, why should we call? It's nowadays we can call someone without offering, <laughs> calling for getting something yes, from them instead of offering something to them. So here it's just the opposite. You cannot call anyone without having some offering. So offering and calling is in one action of hotar, the summoner of the gods and who is making the offering. That's why Shubhinda puts in one sentence, hotasi, purvya, you are the first ancient purvya who calls to the gods and gives the offering. In one word, hotar. He is the command prashasta. And he is, sorry, his is the command. That is his prashasta who commands. And his is purification, pota. Pota is the one who purifies soma to pour into the flame. From his birth, Janusha, or by his birth, literally, he stands in front, the vichar of our sacrifice, Purohitach. Purohitach literally established in front, established in front of our journey, of our constant growth. By birth, he is the leader of about, our journey. Uh, about the word vicar, um, I've just looked it up and uh, it's a, an ecclesiastical representative. So in this case, I guess it can stand for the. Yes. For I, I was reading it as Vichara in Sanskrit. <laughs> yes. yeah. um, no, I meaning the, the same thing, Vikar. Yes. Thank oh, you. it's the same meaning. That's interesting that it has uh, uh, the same root. Because I was so used to this word already. I thought it was, <laughs> that, uh, that it was Sanskrit. She have been relieved sometimes Sanskrit words. Oh, yes, me... so you have a, a deeper understanding of the meaning of the word than my dictionary does. <laughs> That's good. Vicharati is to go in the, move in different directions or move. Um, but um, vichar, vichara, I want to see with long arm. Proceeding, change, pondering, doubt, dispute, no, probably not, no such meaning, sorry. <laughs> Somehow I kind of, for a long time, for many years, meeting this vicar, I didn't know that it was that. Okay, thank you for clarifying this. It's, it's very minor, but thank you yeah. for your insight onto the root of the word. She That's been pretty wonderful. Sometimes these words, yes, from the... Uh, from the religious literature, which I am not aware because, you know, I was born in the atheistic country. We didn't follow the, you know, the prescriptions of the religion. <laughs> <laughs> so I do not know those terms. I'm not mm -hmm. aware of them. Great. Um, from his birth, he stands in front as the Purohita, or the leader of our sacrificial journey our growth of consciousness. He knows all the works of this divine priesthood, Vishwa, uh, Artvijya, it's from Ritvik. Ritvik is another priest who knows the seasons, who knows how to sacrifice according to the time uh, frame, yes? The other day I discuss, uh, discussed this with some Jyotishi, and I was asking him why these, you know, nakshatras and grahas, what do they really represent? And he says, it is like archetypes in time. You know, they enter, when the time is shifting, you have to work out another archetype. 
um, yeah, another kind of setting of possibilities is coming into play. So all these um, nakshatras and grahas, they indicate this game of different possibilities in time. They are kind of mapping time. So to know what is coming and what is to be done in a particular time, Ritvig is this priesthood, yes? Ritvig, literally, literally the one who sacrifices according to the time. So he you know Vidvan, all Vishwani, Artvijani in classical Sanskrit, all the um, Ritvig's uh, office, all the prescriptions of this uh, priest. Dhira Pushyasi, and you are um, all the works of the divine priesthood, and you are the thinker Dhira. He is the thinker who increases in us. Pushyasi, you grow as the wise one, or as the one who has the power to focus or concentrate the consciousness on any object of sense. Yeah? Dihira, from Ruddhi, to focus, to concentrate consciousness, to fix consciousness on any object of sense. So the, uh, that's why he is wise. Wise because he has the capacity to, uh, to know everything. Because by concentration, we can know everything. It's uh, actually knowledge by identity, it's by holding onto a particular subject or object, we can come into this contact, inner contact, and know it through our, through us, through our identity with it. So he is Dhira, and he is growing in us, becoming stronger and stronger. With the him in us, we get this new capacity or greater capacity of the growth. Of that. So, Vladimir, I have a question here. Uh, does Agni therefore mean consciousness? The flame of consciousness within us that has to grow and grows in according and to consciousness the... also yes consciousness and power power of consciousness it's um, uh, because consciousness we usually misunderstand as something without power but this is really a power of consciousness thank you these two are always uh, together, together in the Vedic. Together, yes. Together. I, uh, in the post-Vedic, they shift. There is kind of a drift. Power is left somewhere else, and consciousness is elsewhere. So you have to drop power and go to consciousness. Yes, I'm going to dissolve yourself in some blissful state, leaving all undone, so to say, uh, leaving power behind. Power becomes a a thing which we should not follow, something which which is not, um, what to say, desirable for the yoga. So you have to me you you have to leave everything behind of that kind. So you cannot manage life, you cannot manage prakriti. So you leave power behind, and this is not the case in the, in the Veda. There is a power of consciousness which is within our reach. We have to kindle it, to nourish it, to offer to it our life, our thoughts, our feelings, our being, um, and then grow with it. Constantly grow in consciousness, evolve. It's a, it's a very beautiful vision of the evolution of consciousness together yeah. with instruments yeah right. Not in that the, sense he's the vicar that is the, the vicar. Vicar. okay yeah. good robin wants to say something no robin hey, yeah you're muted here so you have to unmute yourself this yeah no i'm listening to that that's very interesting because jane i've been talking about uh, what consciousness is and uh, 
it's interesting to I'm listening very intensely to your description of these things. Right, that consciousness is not only the awareness, but it is also a power. And there is a power of awareness which may change things. Yeah? Not power of awareness to leave things behind, unchanged, but power of awareness which may change them and transform them into their divine prototypes into what they are really meant to be, rather than what they are now. Mm -hmm. So there is, a, they are all, as we saw in our symbolic representations, that all are symbols. And they are symbols because they are not yet the divine embodiment in the full sense. That's why they are symbolic. Symbolic in the sense that they are not fully yet the divine. The divine. They're on the They're way on the to way. make a divine. So, and once they are, then they stop being symbols. The power to understand them is a different way of seeing. You know, you see the actual meaning behind the symbol, which is a inner seeing. Very and much. that also is dependent on the power behind the consciousness. Very if the if there is power behind the consciousness that that inner seeing begins to awaken and you understand the symbol. Is that how that works? I think so. That awareness so that we see behind the, every symbol some truth and the truth once we see, it's already a big step forward because we want that thing to be that truth. Mm -hmm. yeah? And for that, we need to make an offering. We have to take the thing and to offer it to the higher consciousness to, mm -hmm. to make it. Mm -hmm. There will be a mutation, transformation, there will be a process of yes. change. Yes. The world will not stay the same anymore. We have an idea that by changing consciousness, the world will change. Yeah? So to say, we will see the same world in a, this is very typical for our way of thinking. Yeah? So the world will be the same, but the consciousness will change. And because it will change, we will see another world. And that's yes. it. That's the end mm -hmm. of the story. And this is not so. So the consciousness will change and then the world will start changing. And that will take time. That is the process that instruments become more and more suitable for that consciousness. It takes, and that is the evolution yeah, of the instruments to embody the higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. So the instruments yeah, also are out of change. Yeah. Is, uh, when you mention power as a part of Agni, is there also the element of love coming when we talk about the offering Right. What is love, actually? <laughs> right. If you think of it, uh, so if you have consciousness and power, would you have love as a result? What do you think? Yes, of course, right. because it's a union, union of power and uh, power and consciousness. Right. That creates love. It creates that bliss, at least, yes. which we call love. Love may be even something more, something um, something more intense, maybe it's from another kind of dimension which will be manifested later. As Shubindu says, not all the powers of the mother are manifested now in this universe. There will be more powers coming. Maybe that uh, something we refer to, uh, but bliss, yes, bliss, when you have, um, total correspondence of consciousness and power, then you're totally in bliss, definitely. In Savitri, she says that when I have known all, I will love all something to that effect, she tells death. So, you know, it is the union. The union of these two brings about the understanding. And that is love. Love is understanding. Uh, yes. you know, the acceptance, the tolerance, the union. Right. These she talks two, about Savitri. 
Yes, love and oneness. Yes, yeah, remember, there's this. Um, yes. To live is to um, to love and to feel oneness is to live. Yes. This yes. is the only truth I know or say. Yes. This is the last message of Savitri. Yes. And, uh, what is this to love and to feel oneness? Why they're both? Why two? Not just to love. Why to feel oneness also? And this is interesting because these two elements, one is more intensely subjective love. Yeah? It's psychic, giving oneself, loving really, subjectively, individually. And the other is to feel the oneness of all the beings. Uh, it's more spiritual, so to say. One is psychic, other is spiritual. And these two elements are absolutely needed. Mm. Love is a mysterious thing. It's something from Purushottama, I think. Bliss is a bit different, yeah? Mm. Bliss mm. is more a result of harmony of consciousness and power. Mm. And love is plus to it, something else, yeah? There's some truth of the person, personality there. At least I feel like this, I do not know. But we can call bliss and love their kind of synonyms for now, to make it easier. <laughs> right. Okay, number seven. Yo, Vishvatach Supratikach Sadring Asi, Dure Chit San, Tadit Ivati Rochase, Ratriashit Andach, Atideva Pashyasi, Agne Sakhi Marishama Vayantava. The faces of this God are everywhere, and he fronts all things perfectly. He has the eye and the vision. When he see, when we see him from afar, yet he seems near to us, so brilliantly he shines across the gulfs. He sees beyond the darkness of our night, for his vision is divine. With him for friend, we cannot come to harm. Shibendu kind of unfolds the meaning. You know? it, he does not translate literally. Let us go literal, um, word by word. Yahu Vishvatah from every side, Supratikah with perfect, beautiful face, facing every from all sides. Sadring Asi, together with the vision. You know? together with uh, the seeing, the sight, Durechit, and if it, he is far, Durechit son, when he is far, or if he is far, Tadit Iva, he is like a lightning, Atirochase, shining through. Ratriashchit Andhach, he Atideva Pashyasi, you, O oh God, see through the blind darkness of the night. Agnesakhi Mar Shama Vayantava. With him for friend, we cannot come to harm. So he has that capacity to look through the blind darkness of the night. And this is something, you know? So nobody can really uh, make him blind, make him not be seen even through the deepest, the blind darkness of the night. Andhas, Ratriach Andhas, yes, the blindness of the night. It is a direct reference to consciousness, which can, which is conscious even though there is darkness around. You know, it's not dependent on light and dark. Consciousness is just awareness 
regardless of time and space. That's why Sri Aurobindo said the mother is always watching you because she her consciousness is everywhere. So in a, that sense, the scene, I think, I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to ask if that is the site he's referring to, the site of consciousness. Yes, definitely. This is consciousness and term. But is all seen. interesting is that the darkness is also consciousness, yes? absence of consciousness. Absence. That light of consciousness which turned to be darkness. And there is a blind darkness, deep fear. Yeah? And still, Agni, as a power of consciousness, has this uh, capacity to pierce through and to be seen through blind darkness as lightning as if. Because Agni is involved in the darkness. He is the immortal among mortals. He is not the light which comes from above and illumines the darkness, showing us all oh, there, there is a deep darkness. Mm. No, he is from within the darkness, mm. piercing the darkness through, can be seen through. So within the darkness, in the depth, in, at the bottom, there is the first avatar, Agni, yeah. who shines through, who pierces through the darkness and gives us the direction of the development. It was the second creation in our presentation, we saw it, yes? The plunge of the yes. consciousness into the darkness, it is him, the first avatar, mm -hmm. who evolves from the depth of the darkness. Yeah? And he can see through the darkness. Um, so darkness cannot stop him, cannot blind him. He has that capacity of seeing, that means consciousness in this case. Yeah? Sees through the darkness. We can't see through the darkness without him. We will be blinded in that realm yeah? if we don't have his presence in us the divine presence. We need the divine consciousness to look through the darkness. All right. This is a mysterious thing, of course, of looking through the darkness, through the blindness of the darkness even. In Savitri, Shubindu describes the depth of the darkness where the soul disappears and, and removed from the list of existent ones. There is such a depth of darkness where even our soul, who is the light, who is the spark of this fire, but this fire is a universal consciousness yeah. which supports all the sparks. It is the son of Rudra, Shiva, who on his shoulders holds the whole inconscient and the whole nature. <laughs> so within that darkness, in the depth, if we break through, there will be a supreme light, the divine sun involved, Vivaswat. And I think that is the Rudra's action. Agni is the Rudra's action. Huh? breaking through the darkness, seeing through the darkness, knowing what it is for, what it is doing there. And interestingly, when we go through this canto of the mother of evil and sons of darkness, we are now reading it, there are, there are descriptions by Sri Aurobindo where he explains how that involved energy is pushing that darkness to self-awareness through pain through through those piercing uh, oh, jealousy uh, hate all those elements <laughs> which we don't want to have is actually reviving the non-existent darkness because it falls into oblivion it becomes stiffened and it needs only some kind of awakening and awakening can take place only in that realm only through pain hate uh, jealousy 
all those elements on which we kind of try to avoid because they are harmful to us they are very productive from that lower level and they push the darkness to awaken to consciousness amazing yeah? <laughs> so everything has its place and so this misplacement of those forces into our realm where we don't need them to to push us forward is actually becoming harmful to us but on that level on the lower level it's absolutely necessary and that is fire smoky fire when it burns it burns with a lot of smoke uh, and uh, you don't want to have that fire but otherwise that thing that karma that desire in the build yeah that lust that if that lust would not be in the darkness the darkness would never awaken to higher consciousness huh? so everything has its place in this divine economy I don't know why I mentioned this maybe because of this undas because this blind darkness of the night that he is piercing through seeing through uh, but his action there will be very uh, very smoky and very burning very painful all right we move to the number eight Purvo deva bhavatu sunvato ratho asmakam shamsah abhi astu dudhiyah tad a janito ta pushyata vacho tad a janita uta pushyata vacha agne sakhye mar shama payantava O oh, you godheads, let our chariot be always in front. Let our clear and strong word overcome all that thinks the falsehood. Interesting, huh? O oh, you godheads, know for us, know in us that truth. Increase the speech that finds and utters it that can express that truth within him for friend we cannot come to harm we could see the connection from verse to verse there is a development of some kind if we follow carefully we will see that the, it's not just random mantras but they have a kind of developmental thought so May our Rathach, our movement, conscious movement, be first. Or our is a asmak, I'm sure Bindu uses it for both says, Sunvatach. Sunvatach of the one who presses Soma, literally. Of the one who gives and presses and distills his delight for the divine. May his Ratha be first, O oh gods. May his movement be in front and our expression asmakam shansach abhi astu may overcome dudhiyach durdhiyach the bad or imperfect um, concentrations of consciousness imperfect thoughts literally falsehood Shubhinda says all that thinks the falsehood interestingly because he found the very important way of explaining dur uh, dur yes it's not incapacity of focusing it's actually a wrong focusing yeah? uh, when we focus our consciousness on wrong things and then we are kind of inviting those forces more and more into our and this happens we know how it happens yeah? 
when we are worried about something or we are kind of bewildered of something or we are afraid and we start pondering upon this, what I should do, what I would say, what should be done. And we more and more invite those worries or what will happen to my health. Yeah, this is a wrong thinking, wrong concentration. We think falsehood. So may he, it's amazing, remove those false thinkings, you know, fixations, because once they are removed, whatever the result, we will be much better anyhow. It can't be worse. We think that thinking through those problems, we will solve them. No, we just invite them. It's very applicable to, to the psychotherapy that people come to the psychotherapist to share their problems. And they need to come every day <laughs> at the end, not once a week anymore. But uh, they have to be heard because they invited more and more. And so there is no solution there. The solution is to find and kindle the flame within us and distill the delight of our existence and offer that delight to the flame, that it may share that delight with Godheads, with Godheads other cosmic forces which are participating in this transformation. This is the way to go. We can't solve the problems by thinking about them. This was also the, the thing which we discussed in Oroville the other day, uh, that um, I remember this is from the Veda, actually. I was offering that solution, but nobody was listening. <laughs> uh, they wanted to solve the problems uh, of, I said, but you created the problems which you want to solve. And more you will solve those problems, which are not our problems, the more problems that will be there to solve. So why to go the wrong route? Um, is it not better to go towards the mother's guidelines and to face the problems we each, she will be solving for us and we will be solving together but we will have to solve any of the problems but better to solve those which come from the mother's path than from the our own but yeah, yeah people thought i'm a little bit off but it is true we will have to solve the problems anyhow but what problems huh? and how to solve them <sighs> this is the word yeah wrong concentration concentration on wrong problems which are leading to more problems i just want to say that is so true so true Yeah, if you look at our life, we see it all the time. Yeah, If we take the wrong concentration on the wrong problem to solve, it will bring more problems, mm -hmm. which you have to solve, which you have to solve afterwards. And you have to keep it all the time. It's like lying. You know, lying and then remembering that you lied, because otherwise, if you forget, you may say the truth and then you will be discovered. Something of the kind. So it makes you heavy heavy burdened mm. uh, and lost lost in all those you know labyrinths of going such to... such a coincidence yeah. vladimir uh, in our organization we were having similar problems and this einstein quote came up later on towards the end saying that we can't solve problems from the same place where we created them and then we like I was just wondering, like, no, unless the state of consciousness changes. Yes, yes. That's excellent. I didn't know Einstein had addressed that issue. That's really brilliant. Yeah. This is the statement in the in the Bible that says, "Lean not unto thine own understanding." That uh, 
is is similar to this when we use our own mental framework to work from and if that has problems in it then we just go around in circles with our own problems within the parameters of our consciousness but we have to rise above and beyond that yes yes that's crucial isn't it to rise above and beyond the, mm. the mental level to see to see where i mean i think um sri Aurobindo says something about this in the i think it's in the synthesis uh that rising above the dualities rising above conflict where we can see where the, the a higher vision where everything is one and then that solves things for us yeah yeah it's better to do something which um, which will lead us out to this to the sunlit path better to follow sunlit path and solve all those problems than to follow through you know through the jungle solving all those smaller problems which are exhausting it's like a nightmare you know you're fighting with forces and they are inexhaustible you can't really conquer them one problem leads to the other you try to come out from this labyrinth and you go deeper into labyrinth so there is no solution there no way out only to wake up and to start anew just to to kindle the flame uh, to rely on totally different force in us instead of relying on that what is given to you to be solved yeah. so this is agni may they those forces divine forces which he invites as altar know for us interesting yeah Shebinda really makes it uh, distinct. Know for us. Or you, Godheads, know for us. Not we, no. You know for us. Oh, literally, you know within us. Make us knowledgeable by your presence and action. Know in us that truth increase the speech that finds and utters it interestingly speech the word is not only expressing the truth but also finding the truth the word can lead you to the truth not just in my life when i get to, if i get into any kind of difficulty if i ask the divine to inspire me to fill my mind with the right thinking the right thoughts the right circumstances that invariably that will happen it will intelligence will come to me that is not mine and solutions to problems will happen that are that I didn't think of so we can interact with this other world this other force um intimately all the time and and if we exhaust our own possibilities sometimes i exhaust my own possibilities first you know <laughs> and then you it really drives the lesson home just how much that how how well this works because we by using our own devices we get to know the limitations of them and then when we ask for divine intervention and it works so beautifully everything works so harmoniously and that's not us doing it mm -hmm. so it's it's wonderful it's really wonderful there was um there is a friend who visits us today these days and um, he told me his story he's a carpenter and he was he was making somebody's roof and he couldn't find the solution everything was messy rainy and wet and this and that and he couldn't find the solution how to make things work properly on the roof yeah that the water will flow properly and so it was a difficult situation he said okay tell me what to do <laughs> and then suddenly he says 
through his consciousness, the vision came like this and this and that and that. And everything whoop, became clear to him. And when he did it, he put it into place, all those, you know, construction, he felt absolute peace. This is how know in us yes, works. There is a way to know in us. There are forces in us who know. Only we have to allow them to come to our surface consciousness, to inform us, to act upon us. It's beautiful. Um, we don't trust it. We, we are very egoistic. We think that we may find our way. We know a lot already how things work. And then uh, the, our life becomes very boring or some kind of, maybe not boring, but um, some kind of empty or flat. Or suppose I do everything and everything works out. So what? So, so what? Yeah. I lived, yes, I did this, I did that. And there's something missing, something fundamentally um, marvelous, which life represents that, you know, uh, wonder of uh, discovery, of, of growth of consciousness. If I'm realizing everything I want without the growth of consciousness, it's really not the thing. Anyhow, um, this is what it is. Know in us and grow or make in us the expression of consciousness, as Shubhendra says even, speech that finds and utters the truth. And this finds the truth is interesting because we will have to to speak the word which will lead us to the truth. Um, so there is something in us like um, like an aspiration uh, within the heart, and that's why it is considered that the mantra Brahman is rising from the depth of the heart, from the ocean heart, as a wave of delight. It is the word, actually, which is invoking the proper powers, divine powers, to interact and to engage. Yeah? So this word can find the truth, can find what is needed and express it. Express it so it has two functions, to connect to the truth and then to express it, to manifest that truth. An interesting ajanita. Ajanita is with a prefix has this um, ajna root, command. Literally, not only know in us, as Shubhendra writes, but know in us by, by power, so to say. Know in us by applying the action. Yeah. Because ajanita, with ajna, it has the sense ajna chakra, you know, there's also the chakra of will, of command. Ajna is also command. And literally, we can translate command in us and grow the expression of the truth. Or will in us, will. Will as know and will together, you know? Become aware of your power in us. Oh, I found a new expression. Become aware of your power in us and give us the, the expression of the truth. Okay, we can stop here today. We will have a few more not to overload the thinking and if you have something to share please we have praveen with us praveen joined us yes praveen are you here good morning Lazmis. thanks i think this is really great 
Yeah, I, I told you, Rig Veda would be marvelous. It's something, something which is very rare in the literature. It's not even Upanishads, not even the Gita, though they have their own power and vision and beauty. It is something else altogether. Grand and vast and archetypal. No? We have it with us Ludmila also from Moscow, nice Anna also from uh, Philadelphia, Stacy in the morning, early in the morning from uh, California. You want to say something now? Maybe it's too early. I was just going to say, I really have enjoyed, I know I never turn my camera on, but I just am engaged with you and I really love the conversation and today's especially was just beautiful for me. Uh, it's things I'd been thinking myself for the last couple of weeks and it just really hit me. So I appreciate uh, everybody's willingness to share um, and have that dialogue because it really uh, means a lot to me. Thank you, Stacey. Yeah, for us all, yes, I think. Regarding uh, mentally tackling our problems, uh, I was reflecting on that. And I recall that uh, Sri Aurobindo says that the mind can only know itself. So if a problem has to be solved above the level of our intellect or our puzzling through things, we really need to uh, access higher knowledge than what the mind is capable of and offering it to the mother and aspiring as Robin was describing, uh, finding so many solutions to complex problems in that way, things that are beyond our usual mental range. <laughs> Oh, I think that's that's really wonderful. Right. right. Also, Vladimir, uh, I mean, when I think in the previous verse or somewhere uh, you were talking about, you know, the consciousness rising up above the darkness, and um, I remember in um, in in the Jyotisha circle. Uh, in the Brihad Parashara Hora Shastra, there was one scholar who was explaining about a mantra for sun. And that apparently is actually also is from the Rig Veda. And, uh, and, and the translation of that also seems to be very much similar to what uh, you have shared uh, today. I just shared the mantra and I would like to know if, if, if this is from the Rig Veda and uh, if this is very close to the previous mantra also. Yeah, it must be from the Rig Veda. You can read it if you know it, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I'll just share it in the in the chat. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, well, let me see then. Savita Divine comes forth on the golden chariot. And yes, it is from uh, 135. I can even recognize brilliant. I can remember it's in my drawing mark. Yes, it's uh, 135 by Hiranya Stuban Girasa. Yes. Um, hymn to Savitar, yes. Um, you see that uh, light with, which rises from within the darkness is from the hidden sun. There is a hidden sun in the darkness, and this is the secret of the Veda, that in the deepest darkness there is a hidden trans, transcendental light and power. But that has to be recovered. So the flame which is rising, as it is said, it is rising up from Vivasvat. Agni is rising up from Vivasvat. Can you imagine how Vivasvat, if Vivasvat is the lord of the sun, so how then Agni can rise up, wear up if the sun is above. So that seems that sun is not above, but below. 
and from there the Agni, the flame, is rising and piercing through and looking through the darkness. Um, this is the, the whole inconsistency with the post-Vedic literature. The Veda has this knowledge which uh, the post-Vedic literature lost. We look at the darkness as total darkness below and light as above, so we have to go above, don't go below. Yeah? So this is the whole idea of liberation. Leave the darkness to itself, don't touch it. Yeah? In the Veda it's not like that. It is understood that the darkness is actually uh, across the path of the divine event. Yeah? As Sri Aurobindo starts his savagery, across, it is not um, the end of the story. Yeah? It is the, on the path yeah? which we have to cross. Across the path of the divine event, a huge foreboding mind of night alone in her unlit temple of eternity lay stretched, immobile upon silence march. So this, this has to be crossed. Night is not our beginning nor our end, is another verse from Savitri. Yeah. We come to her from the supernal light. And by light we live and to the light we go. So it is something we have to cross. It's, um, and that is, this knowledge comes from the Veda, uh, which, is, which is nowhere found afterwards. <laughs> I mean, nowhere really. There are remnants here and there of some transformation and application, but not really a total transformation, not this uh, archetypal vision. Yes, all right, great. We can look into that hymn of Savitar, uh, into those few verses next time, just to, to see how it is. Great, uh, so we can stop here for today and I close with mantra. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santo Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschit Dukha Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti Shanti, Shanti. We missed today Kinshuk and the Gita Shri, but maybe they were busy with something. See. See you next time. Bye. Bye.